Hey Leo, happy birthday. I hope you're doing good. I hope you're enjoying your birthday season. And of course, if you have not had a birthday yet, happy early birthday. If you've already had your birthday, happy belated. So I wanna take a look and see what is going on for you at this time, especially being in your birthday season. So spirit guides, angels, ancestors for Leo, let's take a look and let's see what is it that Leo is needing to know at this time when it comes to their birthday season. We have the four of cups in the reverse. Tell me more for what Leo needs to know at this time, the judgment in the reverse. What else? Ace of Pentacles, you're battle tested. You've been battle tested in the Empress in the reverse. Oh Lord, yes, you've definitely been battle tested. This feels like a preparation. You, you've been going through preparation, having to learn on the job. For some of you, it may be literally, but this feels like in the scheme of life, you've been having to learn as you go, figure it out as you walk, having to walk by faith and not by sight, not knowing how to go about something, but just trying to wing it. That's what it feels like. You don't have an instruction guide. You don't have an instruction manual, but you've been trying to wing it through the process to get to the other side. It almost reminds me because I can feel the sensation of, am I on the right path? Am I doing the right thing? Because you don't have the clarity and you don't have the reassurance to be reassured if you are on the right path, but yet you can only hold your faith to the highest standard to believe in yourself and trust in spirit that you are on the right path. And that's where I go back to this winging it because you're letting your soul dictate where you're going to go. You're claiming domain over your life. So if in the past, let's say maybe we've listened to other people's opinions or we may have taken on other people's fears. Maybe we had our own limiting beliefs and our own life experiences that may have held us back. It's, it got you to a point of feeling tired of just listening to other people or not walking in your path or repeating the same mistakes or ending up in the same circumstances, finding yourself back in the same position to be tired and sick and tired of being in that spot. So it's like now you have nothing else to lose. Let me listen to my soul. Let my soul guide me because when I try to guide me, I lead me off the cliff. But when I allow my soul to guide me, it always directs me in the right space. So it's like you're placing more trust on your soul and your intuition and your faith than you are your own sight as a woman or as a man. Because as a human, we can misdirect ourselves. But spirit, and you have that strong base. You really do have a strong base with your faith here in spirit, in the universe, or whatever it is that you may believe that you know that's the right path that you have to follow. So it feels like, I keep wanting to say you're in, you're in preparation, you've, but you've been in preparation. This isn't just starting, you've been in preparation. Those moments of not knowing what to do, those moments of not having answers, those moments of not, clar or not having clarity are all moments of preparation because it does feel like when this blessing comes in, you're going to still have those times where you're confused, you're uncertain, you're unsure, but because you've already weathered those storms again, you being battle tested, when those times come up in your new opportunity, you will have better coping mechanisms and skills to go through the anxiety, to go through the worry, to go through the concern, because you've already been there and done that, and because you've made it out on the other side, you realize and you have a clear understanding that you will always make it out on the other side, even if in that moment it doesn't feel like it. So in this, again, it feels like you've been going through preparation, these experiences of worry or angst or, you know, having these new things come towards you and not knowing how to handle it, all of these things have been setting you up for your future to continue on your path because you are on the right path. But I think sometimes when we get caught up on these side areas of our life, whether it is that dead end job, that bad relationship, our financial issues, family issues, health concerns, our kids, our marriage, when we get caught in those areas for too long and we don't colonize those spaces in our life and clear out spaces in our life, in those areas they tend to drag us down they tend to be that additional weight that we're carrying that we don't have to carry you don't have to carry that weight so i think when we do get caught up on those side areas again whether it's work health finances etc it makes us feel like we're not on the right path because we're not seeing progression we're not seeing forward momentum we're not seeing movement because we're in a wash rinse and repeat cycle that's why i go back to the beginning of this reading where i feel like you've gotten sick and tired of being sick and tired of getting the same outcomes or seeing yourself back in the same position or making headway, right? Taking five steps forward and then three steps back and you're only teetering, but you're not excelling. This is changing for you. This is totally changing for you. This is abundance here. 
So tell me more about this. Tell me about this Ace of Pentacles, right? This opportunity that's coming in from my Leos. We got the Nine of Swords. The Page of Pentacles in the reverse. The Three of Pentacles in the... Mm -mm, mm -mm. The what? You, oh my gosh. You are your biggest critic. No one can be harder on yourself than you. Even if you are amazing, even if you are excelsior, there are still things that you would either internalize or you can look at yourself like, well, I'm not good enough. Or will they actually hire me? Or will I actually get that financial break? Or will I actually get that home? It, it almost feels like there's a complex sometimes that we can slip into subconsciously where even though we may be qualified, we may be capable, we may be able, we may feel like it still may not happen for us. So it puts us in a state of worry or doing mental gymnastics. But then on the flip side of this, I ask those of, of you that, where you may not be qualified, you may not have, you may feel like you may not have the ability to get what you want, get what you desire, or it may not happen for you. And I always think of it from this perspective, spirit wouldn't place that desire on your heart if you were not capable of achieving it. Spirit wouldn't put that desire in your mind if you weren't capable of receiving it. Spirit wouldn't put that, that feeling and that knowing in your soul if it wasn't for you. So I don't care how much you get in the head about will this, will this not, Am I going to get this? Am I not? Will this happen? Will it not? Will we come back together? Will we not? Spirit's not going to put that energy on your heart if it was not meant for you. I feel a lot of, I feel a lot of almost putting the cart before the horse because there is some lack of control when things are out of our ability and it's up to the universe or maybe somebody else is, you know, holding our fate on if we get that job or that loan or our apartment or, or car, whatever it may be. When we feel like we're not in control of the outcome of a situation, we tend to future predict how things may play out because it gives us some sense of not only preparation to handle the blow, whether it's good or bad, but it also makes us feel like we're kind of a few steps ahead of what may happen, but you cannot predict what's preordained to happen for you. You cannot prepare fully for things that are meant to come into your life. And I think this is one of those things where we may be mentally putting the cart before the horse when... Your faith in spirit and the fact that spirit put this on your soul should be more, excuse me, it should exceed any kind of fear that you may have or concern or worry. So can you tell me how will this opportunity make my Leos feel? How will this opportunity make you guys feel? We got the emperor and the five of swords in the reverse. Uh, Aloe vera. Aloe vera is coming to mind and plant medicine. So I don't know if somebody just kind of as a side message, if somebody's getting into like herbal herbalism, maybe somebody uses like aloe vera lotions or um, aloe vera in, in their cooking. I'm getting a lot of holistic, very healthy uh, products, food, ingredients, things that's really good for the body, the mind, soul, and spirit. Okay. Queen of Cups in the reverse and the King of Cups in the reverse. And let's get one more. The moon in the reverse. Something about your life is being uprooted with this. It's like you're getting ready to go through a massive change, but it's almost like you have to be unapologetically about doing so. So whatever this opportunity, and it does feel very bountiful, this is something that you've been having on your mind, so you will know exactly what this is. Whether this is you worried about your living situation or your finances, are you going to get that job? This actually ends up working out for you really well. But this is asking you, though, if you really have faith that things are going to work out for you, you got to have unwavering faith in that. And when it does happen for you, because I see it happening for you, whatever that thing is that you've been dealing with, struggling with, or just saying like, hey, I don't want to repeat this. It could even be an addiction. I'm tired of having to fall back and relapse. I am done. And you actually standing on that. It could even be to that degree. Nonetheless, whenever you come through the other side of that opportunity, you are going to have people that may feel some way towards you because they won't recognize who you are because you are being elevated from where you were to where you will be and where you will further grow. And these are people who may remember you as a certain way or remember you as a certain person. And because you're changing past that, these people may feel some way, and it will be clearly abundant, abundantly apparent to you, 
you will, you will clearly see just based off their microaggressions, based off their mannerisms, based off their behaviors, whether they're truly happy for you, you can always tell in the eyes, even if they're smiling, you will be able to see that either these people may be a little envious of you because of what comes out, what works out for you. You may have people that feel like they, they didn't expect that of you. Maybe they thought less of you. They thought less of what you could actually achieve or what you can get. And even to a degree, and I would say this, this is a feminine energy that is surrounding you, specifically a woman, right? This isn't a, a man with feminine energy. This is strictly a woman. There is a woman that will be around you that will be feeling some way about this blessing that's happening in your life because it feels like it's a parallel blessing they wanted in their life, but it's happening to you. There's this weird undertone with whoever this woman is that is going to feel some way towards you. I don't know if they're going to be outward about it because I feel this is a woman that will be passive aggressive. So watch the underhanded jokes and the backhanded compliments because that's what it feels like from this woman. But because it's happening to you and not them, they're feeling some way. I think your life is being uprooted. I think in this new experience, you're going to be busy. You're not going to be in the... It's like either you're uprooting, literally in the sense of a home, you're moving, you're relocating, you're getting ready to move into a new home, whether it's with somebody or you're on your own, or this is you being uprooted from the home. So you're going to be very busy. So you're not going to be in the home as much. You're not going to, and that, I think that kind of goes back to these people because of this new opportunity, it's going to keep you busy. You're going to have to deal with this and everything that's coming with it. These are people you don't have the free time like you may have had to be there for them or entertain them or give them time or consider them. It's like now you're having to consider you and this new life experience. And I think there's gonna be some people that it's going to feel some way, but I think your energy is so unapologetically about you because you've refused to keep falling back into a pattern, a cycle. Again, I, I go back to addiction, not saying that y'all are dealing with that, but I think that's the best way to explain it when somebody just relapse and they constantly find themselves relapsing until a point where it's like they have no other choice but to get clean or, you know, that's the end of their life or they can end up in jail. You know, when you don't have any more options to choose from, you are forced to either get up on your feet and rise or just stay down and, and deteriorate. That's what it felt like here for you that you've gotten to a point with something, whether it's about your own self that's been holding you back or just an experience you keep going through, whether in your relationships, your finances, your stability. It's like, I'm tired. You can't continue it anymore. The soul is tired. But throughout that process of making that choice to say, I don't wanna deal with this anymore, your preparation season has prepared you for where you're moving into. So this is, this is can you tell me more? I wanna see more about this blessing here for you. What is this? What is this Ace of Pentacles all about? Page of Wands. I'm hearing that, uh, what's, it's from a movie, but I think it's an old song. It's anything you can do, I can do better. Anything you can do, I can do better than you. I think that's how it goes. Ace of Cups. Yeah. I don't think you're coming from a braggadocious place. I don't think you're coming from an egotistical place, but this is gonna have you, I'm not gonna lie, Leo, this is gonna have you feeling like a Leo. This is gonna have you ruffling your fur. This is gonna have you with your back, you know, up straight and your chest out and your shoulders back. It, something about this is going to make you feel very proud. Proud of yourself, proud that you were able to stick it through, proud that you were able to overcome. Proud that you didn't give up on yourself when you could have and you had every reason to give up on yourself. You didn't give up on yourself. Celine Dion is coming to my mind. I don't know if somebody loves Celine Dion, somebody listens to Celine Dion, or maybe you resonate with her story if you know about her story and what she's been through even with her health. I'm just getting Celine Dion. Um, but you're going to feel really proud. Really, really proud. And I think that's why this unapologetic energy is coming. And again, it's four wands in reverse. Some of you are literally getting ready to move homes, relocate, or you're going to be so busy with this. If this is in regards to love, right? Let's say you've been in that pattern of, you know, bad relationship cycles and it's just like you've made changes, significant changes to align yourself with what you want. This would be a new love that keep you're going to either be so busy, you're barely at home because you're spending so much time with them, or this would be somebody you end up moving in with or merging lives with, families with, homes with. 
Uh, if this is in other areas of your life, whether it's your stability, your finances, if your home has been a pressing situation for whatever reason, you're getting rid of that home, you're releasing that home, so that way either you can feel emotionally better because you don't have to deal with the weight of that home, or you're going to be moving into a home that is more emotionally secure for you, you feel safe, you feel like it's your sanctuary. So if you, not, if you have not found a home, whether it's literal or physical location, or just in general, your tribe, people that resonate with you, people that connect with you, if you have not found your home, you are finding your home through this opportunity. And I love that. What else about this? Uh, six of Pentacles in reverse. Yeah, and you're not. And there you go on the bottom of the deck. Strength in the reverse. You've been the strong one for people. You've been the one being the backbone of the family for your friends, for your relationships. You've been the one that had to be strong when you had no strength. You had to be the one that was still pouring into cups even at times when you felt like you didn't have that in return. And even when you have had a village, for some of you that have a village, that have people that surround you and love, you may have not really had the ability or given yourself the grace to really focus on the things that you need to do because maybe you've been busy pouring back into your village. This is like unapologetically, listen, I have to take care of this. This is something that I've been wanting. And it's like you want to give 112% of your focus to this. I do think there's some people that's going to feel some way about it. Nonetheless, especially if this is a relationship. I'm not going to deny it. If this is a relationship for you, Leo, people are going to feel some way that it ended up working out for you and you getting the, the partnership that you want and they didn't receive that yet in their life. Their timeline is just different from yours. Any last thoughts here, Spirit, with Leo on this? I just get you feeling so proud. Something about this is very majestic. Like I can just see a lion like shaking its mane, just like taking in the sun and just embracing it. It's just like, thank God, finally. It's like a badge of honor that that's what this feels like. Everything that you've gone through up to this moment to get to this point for this breakthrough, for this actual opportunity to come in, it's like you're wearing everything you went through with a badge of honor. Like, I had to deal with this. If it wasn't for me, I, I couldn't have overcame this. If it wasn't for X, Y, and Z, I wouldn't be where I'm at. If I didn't give up, you know, on this situation or opportunity, it, you're very proud about this. You're wearing it like a badge of armor. So whatever this is that does happen for you has been something that's really been pressing you on the mind state, on the heart state, something that when it finally does come forward for you, there's such a big relief. Like it feels like weight has been lifted off your spirit or a weight has been lifted off your back. It's just like, oh my God, finally, finally I can breathe again after months of not feeling like I'm able to breathe or years of feeling suffocated by the situation. Thank God. And it's like having taken that first inhale of air, fresh air, it's, it's just, I, I, I'm so sorry I can't articulate myself because it's a feeling, it's an experience. You can't verbalize it. It's like somebody, somebody being locked up and then finally being able to be free and having their freedom again, being able to get back to society, being able to get back into their, into their life, feeling like them again, not feeling confined. Whatever this has been, that you've been in preparation, having to deal with the whole circumstances around that, that's when you finally are no longer in that season. It's just going to feel like relief. So let's see anything else. Anything else you can tell Leo in regards to this? And I'm going to wrap up here for you. This is so beautiful. Anything else you can tell Leo about this? Queen of Swords in the reverse. The Devil in the reverse. Seven of Pentacles in the reverse. In the Hierophant. Some of you are gonna be making radical changes to your beliefs. Uh, this, this may be a little bit of a side message, so I apologize, but I, I feel like somebody's getting ready to make a big radical shift to their beliefs. Whether you go from, in a religious way, you go from being spiritual to now being religious, or maybe you grew up with a religious background and you finally let go of those religious beliefs and fully become spiritual. Maybe you get into some type of, excuse me, some type of group that really aligns with your beliefs, some type of club, some type of social circle or setting where you feel seen and understood, you share the same ideologies, or even on a lighter note, this could be 
you now being involved with people in business or work that align with the same uh, hunger mentality. They have the same level of motivation, the same level of drive. They have the same aspirations or ambitions, right? It doesn't have to be always on the religious or spiritual side, but in your reality, this is like you finally taking away or removing people, situations, circumstances, or beliefs that were of yesteryear that may have worked in your preparation stage, that may have been things that you entertained or people you hung out with to help you cope through those times, people that you kept those friendships or the relationships with because maybe you were going through a dark time so it's better to have something than nothing. It's like through the other side, it's like, why am I, why are y'all even still around? Bye. It's like you're cutting out, cutting them out fully. And now you're aligning, aligning yourself with people who we're all hustlers, we're all go-getters, we network, we share business ideas. I help you, you help me. It's like teamwork, network building, or you're aligning yourself with friends that are on the same spiritual path with you or just people who see you, or maybe you're getting back into church, or maybe you're getting into a new spiritual practice and you're, you're, you're involving yourself in that community of that spiritual community that sees you, that recognizes you, that aligns with you soulfully. So you're not just leaving with this brand new experience that you've been going through preparation for but you're also leaving it aligned with people that are able to help you throughout the journey going forward so it's not spirit's not just delivering something to you and saying hey now go about this on your own without any full-on help or any full-on people to be there to help you through this process it's no let me bring you in this blessing, this new experience. And on the way, I'm going to have people that's going to walk with you along the way to show you the ropes, to help you through, to help you elevate with this, right? If it's in a matter of relationship, this could be other couples, right? So removing the single friends and now you're adapting friends who are in relationships or who are married that align with the relationship goals you want and versus your friends that like to go party and go to the bar, or go smoke or do whatever. That's what I'm saying. You're fully doing a course correction of life. You are on the right path. I just think we may have been stuck on some maybe distractions for a little bit that kept us in that loop. I think we've been in a season of preparation for what this is. And I think we've had to go through our own journey. But you'll see clearly as this comes through, you are on the right path. You are. So I'm going to leave this here, Leo. Hopefully this has helped. This has been informative in some way. If you like a personal reading, the link is in the description box below. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.